Hello guys, welcome back to Maker Monday. Today uh, we want to install and integrate this uh, wireless uh, sockets to control whatever you want over the network. What do we need? For this, uh, we need this cheap sockets. You can get it on the hardware store or online. You should take a look that you get uh, this with the dip switches. They are easier to set up than the learning one. We need um, this small uh, RF modules. It's uh, 433 megahertz. You need some jumper cables and you need this. It's the Home Assistant Raspberry Pi we've installed in the first episode. Please make sure to watch this video first. Let's start. First of all, you have to open this. I uh, open one. The first, uh, what we have to do is to set up the system code. This is uh, this five switches. You can set up a code. It's uh, numbered from one to five. You can set up whatever you want. And in this one, you set the same uh, code so they can find each other. And also on this ones you have to set a uh, device code. It's uh, from A to E. So here is the button A, B, C, D. The E one can't be switched with this. I've already set up uh, all this three and this remote to the same uh, system code. Uh, this is A, this is B, this is C. So if you plug them in. Now we should can switch them with the remote. So A. Uh, goes on, B and C. Okay, all three working. What we want to do now is we don't want to use this uh, remote. Uh, we want to do this with the smartphone, we are home assistant. So what we have to do now, we will use uh, this uh, receiver. This is the same like here is built in. So we put them on the Raspberry Pi, press the buttons on the remote. So we can read the code which is sent by this remote. And then we uh, put this code to the home assistant and we connect this sender to the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi can send the same code like uh, the remote. And then we can put this away and send the codes for on and off with home assistant. So let's start the cabling. Here we have the same like this one but in a cool 3D printed um, housing like the same blue with the Raspi. Each of them has a, a pin for power and a data pin and this too so we will use this it's cooler so we connect um, one to ground one to data and power The same we do with this one. Okay, let's uh, connect the sender to the Raspberry Pi. This is the data pin. We put it on 11. 11. So, um, the next one is uh, power. So we take pin number four, the power pin. And uh, this one is ground. We take uh, pin number six. Okay, that's the sender. Now we have to connect the receiver. It's uh, the same thing. The first one here is for five volts power. We take here pin number two. The ground pin is number 10. The data pin we take number 13. Now we have connected everything. Let's power up the Pi and wait until it's booted. So the Pi is powered on. I've connected via SSH to my Pi. So uh, to scan the codes from the remote, there's a small Python tool. We installed this. Okay, it's installed. Now we go to GitHub. We need the Raspberry Pi RF receive and the Raspberry Pi RF send and copy this little script. 
for a receive. Uh, we provide links. Um, receive dot py. Put in all the code and save it. Do the same for the send script. Send dot py. Go to GitHub and copy the code. File. So now we can start it with Python 3 receive.py. Okay, it's running. If you used uh, the default GPIOs I've already used, you don't have to configure anything. It's the def default port 27. So push the button on the remote and we will collect the codes which the remote sends with this receiver and provides it here on the display. So maybe you have pushed the button twice or three times and maybe there comes more than one code. Take the code which, have, which comes often. You have to, to try them a little bit because maybe you receive something it's out in the house from the neighbors, whatever. So let's push it. And you see here comes the first code. It comes three times. So three times is best so you know this is the read code for the on button so we press uh, the off button too so we got another code here we got um, more than one yeah so we have to find the right one mostly the off code is the same like the on code but a little bit higher so additional one three four numbers higher so to try this you can you copy them, save them to a text editor or something where you get them. Now we can use the send script. We use the send script. We can start it without any parameters, so you get um, the usage printed to the console. So we have to use Python three send dot py. And the protocol, the GPIO, we all use the default, so we don't have to change here anything. All we have to do is set the code. So you see the code here. Uh, we put it here in one, three, two, eight, four, six, five. And if I press here, it should go on. Yes, you see here it's a red light. So the switch is switched on. So do this for every button on this remote, for the on and for the off collect all codes and try them with the send. And if you have all codes which collect and send, switch them on, off and so on, um, we can configure them in our home assistant system. Okay, um, now we open the configuration from home assistant. It's located in home, home assistant, dot home assistant. So we open the configuration. And now we define the first home assistant device. So um, before here we have created the MQTT server in the last episode. Today we configure the first switch. So I have here a little cheat sheet. Uh, this is, these are my codes I have collected uh, from the remote. So it's from the A button, B button, Z button and so on. And this here is a template for a switch. I'll copy that, um, put this in here. So here you define, it's a switch. The second is the switch name. So we call it switch one, okay. Maybe if it switches your coffee machine, call it coffee machine, whatever you want. This name you will later see in the web front end. So um, we define here, it's a platform Raspberry Pi RF because we have this uh, RF modules. It's on the GPIO 17, that's uh, the sender port we've used before. So uh, this is a switch with this name and here are the codes. So um, you got those codes before. Here is the on code, Just the on code, copy it, put it here to on. And on the next line, we got the off code. Put this in. So, paste it here. And now we have here 
three of them. So let's copy the whole block. Put a second one in. Um, these names here have to be unique, so you can take each name one time. So I call one coffee machine. It's lowercase letters. And here's coffee machine. And get the code for the second socket. It's this one. Put it in here. And the off code for the second one. And put it in here. Um, I think two is enough to demonstrate it. So we save out this configuration. It's written. So now we go back to the web interface. We are back in the web interface. We've changed something in the configuration on the command line. So let's check if the configuration is valid or, the, or we have made a mistake. We can click here on general check config. So Home Assistant will parse the full configuration. Um, if you have an error, it will print it out. So you should correct it before you restart your system. My configuration is valid. So we have, it seems we have made all right. So let's restart the system. If you make greater changes on the system, you have to restart it to read the new configuration. Sometimes you see here, uh, fail to call the restart, but it works. Okay, I don't know why, but it works. So at the moment it's off. We have to wait a moment. Now it's restarting. Okay, Home Assistant has this new switches, the switch 01 and the switch coffee machine. At the moment they are on. Home Assistant said they are off because they were on when Home Assistant started, so we, we don't know the real state. Yeah. Um, now use the remote, put them off. But you also can hear switch on, switch off, so the on wouldn't do anything because they are already on. The off would switch them off. So now we never need the remote. We can use the Home Assistant. We can push here for on and you see switch one is on. When we press the coffee machine button, the coffee machine goes on. We turn the coffee machine off, the switch goes off. That's it. I think it's really easy to set up some wireless controlled uh, sockets. With the switches now you can do any kind of automation. Uh, you can hear to Twitter. If your girlfriend twitters coffee on, your switch will make the coffee machine switch on. This is the first step. You have your first device connected. Feel free to do it by yourself and if it works, give us a like, subscribe to the channel and we do some automation with this home assistant.